Okay, everybody, so we're going to go ahead and start on uh, Section 2, Part B. Uh, if you have the text open in your web browser, um, Part B is uh, creating an XMB video icon plus separate sound, looping or non-looping. And the game I'm going to be customizing in this tutorial is uh, Dino Crisis. Um, so if you scroll up, there's two different, um, two, there's two parts. There's Part A and Part B. Uh, right here. It's part A and part B. Both are the both pretty much work the same. You're you're accomplishing Almost the same task, but there's it's two different methods of doing it and They're included because they, they work different ways. So uh, Let's say for part A. Let's just imagine um, a short video file. It's maybe 15 seconds or so um, It has audio and when it when the video file reaches the end, it'll loop and it'll just keep doing that over and over. So that's what part A is going to be. Now part B, um, imagine you have uh, a 10 second video file and a 30 second audio file. And you set both to play at the same time uh, and you set both to loop. Now the video file is going to, is going to loop after 10 seconds. And the audio file is going to loop after 30 seconds, but they're going to loop at different at different times because they're one is shorter than the other. And so that's basically what part B is. I prefer part B because you can um, I don't know you can you can fit. I don't want to say you could fit more sound or more music into your um, video file, but uh, I just tend to prefer it over part A. You're certainly welcome to do part A if that's what you want, um, but in this um, in this tutorial, I'm going to be using Part B. They're both they're both very similar in the way you accomplish them. So, um, if you watch this uh, video on Part B, um, and you read you know the text here, you shouldn't have any trouble doing Part A. They're very similar. So, um, let's go ahead and start on Part B here. Scroll down, and uh, it's very important that you read this um, under Part B: Important Facts. Uh, so in order for both the video and the audio to play at the same time, both of the files that you create, that's going to be both an audio and a video file, to do, together they cannot exceed um, a total of 500 kilobytes. Even if it's 501 kilobytes, um, it, will, it will not work on your PSP. It has to be, it has to be 500 kilobytes or below. Um, that sounds small, but, you know, I'll, I'll show you how to do this. It's, you know, it's not really that hard to pull off. Um, the video length, uh, imagine PMS is just, that's just a video file. Uh, the video length, it's limited to a maximum of 12 seconds. If it's, if it's over that, it's not going to play. So, um, just keep that in mind. And, um, this is just kind of like a little note to help you out. Um, you're going to have to be able to find a balance between your video and your audio file. Um, to get to 500 kilobytes. So, uh, you know, as I've done this, uh, I've, I've found out that about 10 seconds of video and about 30 seconds of audio, it comes out to be pretty close to 500 kilobytes. That's a pretty good balance. Um, you know, you can certainly make your video shorter or longer and the same for your audio. You can tweak it around, you know, to fit your needs or wants, but uh, in the end, both have to equal a total of 500 kilobytes. That is vital. So uh, let's go ahead and start. So the first thing we need to do is uh, you need to open up the tool pack here. And uh, there's some applications in here that you need to install. Um, first off, go ahead and install AVI Synth. This um, AVI Synth uh, 258.exe, go ahead and install that. Um, go ahead and, and uh, once you have Audacity installed, um, I'm not sure if this has been updated or not. Uh, if it hasn't, then you can just go ahead and you know install um, the lame MP3 encoder right here. Uh, if it's been updated, you can find that on the uh, Audacity website. Just go ahead and install the, uh, the latest uh, version of the lame MP3 encoder for Audacity. Uh, but just for convenience, I've included uh, this one here. Uh, at the time of, of, of this release, uh, this was the latest one. Um, if you're using a 32-bit machine, uh, you can go up here to A-Track 3 codecs and just click, uh, or 
use this uh, a track 3exe um, what this will do is install um, a track 3 audio codecs to your computer and you're going to need these in order to um, produce the sound for your PSP file uh, if you're using a 64-bit machine there's a different way to do it so um, again use this for 32-bit machines um, and then uh, right here in um, step one uh, there you can follow this link and so it, when you know once you, once you open that link up um, this is how to install a track 3 uh, codecs for 64-bit windows so basically you just you download this file um, copy or you extract the file copy the ACM file to um, this location in your Windows folder and then you're going to copy this to a notepad you're going to save it as uh, anything.reg you're going to run that file and it's going to add um, these registry entries to your uh, Windows registry um, once you do that uh, restart your computer and you'll be able to uh, have uh, a track 3 um, capability on your computer so um, don't skip this you, you you really need to do this a track 3 is um, vital to uh, our final um, uh, project files so again this is for 64-bit windows um, the the thing included in the tool pack is for 32-bit windows so I want to go ahead and say that uh, it has come to my attention that there, um, there's a problem with uh, installing these a track 3 codecs in Windows 7. Uh, not, not all Windows 7 machines, but some of them. Um, one of them, well, including mine. Um, the problem is that when you follow the Windows 7 um, inst installation guide here on the ISO zone, um, you, you still don't have a track 3 uh, capability. So, um, if you go to the text and scroll all the way down to the comment section, uh, I've left a comment with some workarounds uh, that you can try. If those workarounds don't work, then unfortunately, the, the only thing I know to tell you is that you just have to try uh, another computer. Uh, pr preferably one that runs an, an older version of Windows. Uh, I have successfully done this on Windows XP and Vista. Um, other people say they've done it on Windows 7. Uh, I was not able to get it done on my Windows 7, so um, this is... This is primarily an operating system problem, you know, with it not being compatible or whatever with a track three. So unfortunately, uh, that's the only advice I can give you on that. If you are having problems installing uh, a track three codecs on a Windows 7 64 bit machine. So um, that's just an FYI. So. Uh, so you, uh, we've installed AVI synth, we installed the codecs. Um, Go to your desktop. We're going to go ahead and um, make a new folder. Um, this is just kind of to help you out with your, um, to keep yourself organized. We're just going to call this um, Dino Crisis um, Final Files. And I say this, this is just a folder where we're going to put all of, our, all of our final files in this one folder just so we can keep track of it. So that's going to be our video and audio and uh, any pictures we create. So, um, I'm just going to stick this right here, and we're we're going to gradually be adding files to that folder. So we need to understand about how the uh, the different parts of the XMB skin work on the PSP. So here I have just um, just a pretty simple image. Um, as you can see here, we have um, the icon, and that's con it consists of both a, a a picture and a video file. And then you see here we have a background, and that's going to be just a background image. And then we're going to have, you, you can't see it, but um, it's just, we're going to have a, a sound file that's going to play also. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and um, download all of our source files. So um, I have a folder here called Dino Crisis Source Files. And if I open this up, you can see I've already got all my source files, but I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to show you what you need to download in order to make this happen. So, um, so you're going to need about seven different files. Uh, now, this is more than seven, but I'll explain that. So, uh, first off, you're going to need some music. Um, this is just a part of the uh, official soundtrack for uh, Dino Crisis. This is just a music file I downloaded. Um, these four files right here, these are all um, CGI cutscenes from the game. 
Um, but I'm not going to be using, you know, all of the video here. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be basically splicing different parts of these videos together to create about 10 seconds worth of video. And you can do really, you can do anything you want, but this is just the way I want to do it for this particular game. Um, and I'll show you how to download these files in just a minute. Uh, you're going to need a logo uh, for your game. So, you know, of course, I just have a Dino Crisis logo. Uh, this logo has a transparency. So, you know, there's no white or black background on this. Um, it's just just the logo. Um, you're going to need to, to download a background for your uh, icon. So basically, um, your logo is going to sit on top of your background. So I just found this um, scratched up metal um, picture right here. And so basically, um, you know, your uh, Dino Crisis logo is going to go right here. And we're going to shrink that to fit on the PSP. Um, next, you're going to need a background. So um, you can use anything you want. Um, again, this is all very customizable. So this is my background. Um, yeah. Um, this is just like a, I don't know, a corridor or, or whatever. Um, I will, I want to go ahead and note when you, when you do find a background, um, try to get the highest resolution you can. So, um, if you, so if you find a, um, a picture, let's see, um, let's just look for Dino Crisis, uh, background or let's, let's say a wallpaper instead. So um, let's say you want to use this as your wallpaper, just as a as a fictional example. You can see right here it says uh, three, uh, 3840 by 2160. That's a very high resolution photo, and that would work great. Uh, of course, we're not going to use, be using that resolution on our PSP, but the higher resolution your source file is, the better um, your picture is going to look in the end. So um, this one I downloaded, it's not high resolution. It's like... Um, I don't know what is this. Let's see what this is. Um, it's a uh, 320 by 240. Um, that's not a very high resolution, um, but I think I can make it work because I do like this picture and I have a plan for it. So, yeah. Um, but it, as a general rule, get the highest resolution you can when you're when you're choosing your pictures. Um, you're also going to need a, a foreground object or a foreground person or character, or whatever. So, um, basically, imagine this is the PSP background, and uh, I just downloaded a picture of Regina right here. So, basically, I'm going to take this picture of Regina. I'm going to get rid of this white background. And I'm going to paste it right here on the on the uh, on the background. Um, so you know it just kind of it, it's just going to look better um this one right here where um it says regina edit i've just taken the white background out and i'll show you how to do that in a minute and then um once we have uh, regina right here we're going to take our dino crisis logo and i'm going to stick it somewhere in here just to make it look nice and then uh down here this uh, SLUS00922.bin, this is our actual PS1 game. Uh, if you want to download um, a PS1 game, uh, you know, it's very easy. Just go to uh, theasozone.com and go to downloads and then go to, um, you, can, you can go to uh, two places. You can either go to um, PlayStation ISOs or you can go to PSX to PSP. Um, PlayStation ISOs, that's just a, a disc image of an actual PlayStation 1 game. Uh, PSX to PSP, uh, this is where people have converted PlayStation 1 games to work on a PSP already. So, um, yeah, either one of those will work. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but if you go with PlayStation 1 ISOs, um, pick your region. So I'm just going to go USA. Um, you can choose your genre, or date, or whatever. But I always just, you know, choose, um, you know, the letter that your game begins with. 
And then let me find uh I think this is it. Yeah. So okay, here's Dino Crisis. There's uh two different versions of this, version one point zero and one point one. Uh one point one probably has a patch um in the game. Uh so go ahead and if you find um two versions, just download the latest version. I would also highly, highly recommend that you download the redump version. Uh, recently, a user by the name of VGA, he's um, been uploading uh, redumps. of. Um, well, he's finished the PlayStation 1 collection. He's uploading some more for different systems. But um, redumps are verified to be absolutely perfect copies of, of um, the games. So this redump copy of Dino Crisis version 1.1, it, it is an absolute perfect copy of a real PlayStation 1 game. Um, you know, you can also download, uh, here we have another copy of just, just Dino Crisis. This is a, um, just a rip that some that Smashy 9 uh, made. Both will work fine, but um, redumps are verified to be perfect copies. So if possible, uh, download a redump copy. So uh, that's out of the way. Um, so you're gonna need, again, uh, as a recap, you're gonna need uh, your background music, you're gonna need your video files, uh, you're gonna need a logo, a background for your um, icon, a background for your uh, actual wallpaper, and you're gonna need some, some sort of foreground um, object or person, character, whatever. And you're gonna need your game. Again, I just wanna make note that uh, this is highly customizable. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it any way you want. This is just how I do it. So. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to download, um, your music and your video files. Uh, so open up your web browser and just go to YouTube. Um, so what I've done is, uh, I found a guy, this, this is a Sega fan, 1986. Uh, he's, he's basically done a, uh, a let's play for Dino Crisis on the Dreamcast. Um, and in his videos, uh, there are um, cutscenes, and I wanted I wanted to use the cutscenes in my uh, video file. So um, Sega fan 1986, I don't mean to use your stuff, but you have pretty good stuff. So please don't um, accuse me of <laughs> copyright infringement or whatever. I'm sorry, um, but uh, basically I've just I've downloaded this video, um, and that's what uh, that's what one of these is. So, uh, if, when you find the video you want to download, you're just going to copy the URL here. Select copy, and then we're going to open up a new tab, and you're going to go to um, keepvid.com. Uh, here's the URL right here. Um, I'll, again, I'll, I'll have a link in the description if you you know can't see this. Um, but basically, this is going to let you download an MP4 version of uh, the uh, YouTube video. So um, we're just going to paste the URL right here and I'm just going to click download. So it's going to load a Java applet. If your uh, browser pops up like a thing that says, do you want to allow this Java applet, click allow. Um, I've told mine to remember that setting, so it's not going to ask me. Um, but it's going to load the Java applet and it's going to let us download the video whenever it loads. So um, here we have the uh, video right here and um, it has it in uh, 720p and it has it all in all these resolutions. Um, Dino Crisis on the Dreamcast, it only plays in 480p because it's on the Dreamcast. So uh, there's no real sense in downloading a 1080p version especially since it's like 156 megabytes. There's no real reason to do that. So um, you could safely download the 480p version right here and that would be fine. So I've already downloaded that. And um, again, it's one of these files. I don't remember which one it is, but cause I've, I've given, I've given them custom names, but it's one of those. So uh, download the video file you want to use. And then, um, uh, we're done with this one. Then we're going to, we want to download um, a soundtrack or not a, uh, uh, a music for our, uh, our game. So I can't remember which one I chose. It was one of these. 
But anyway, just search um, your game and then OST. And that's the official soundtrack. So um, just um, find the, you have to listen to all these. Just find the one you want. And then, um, again, you just uh, copy this, paste it into here, and it hit download. And it gives you the you can and it gives you the uh, links. So uh, we don't want to download the video because the there really is no video. It's just a picture. What we want is the audio. So it gives us the option right here. You can uh, download uh, the M4A version of the audio at 128 kilobits per second. So go ahead and download that for whatever game you're making, and then. Um, in your source files, that would be your background music. Um, then you can open up Google. See, we're done with YouTube. You can open up Google and you can just search for a wallpaper. Um, let's say you wanted to use this one. You, um, you know, open up the wallpaper and you'd, uh, you know, right click and click Save Image As, and you just like, you know, save that to your um, desktop, and that would be your wallpaper. Uh, you know, I'm not really using this one, but that's, you know, just an example. So, um, then you want, you'd want to, uh, find a logo. So we're just going to look up, um, uh, Dino Crisis logo. Let's well, spell it wrong, but whatever. Um, so I think I just, I downloaded, I think it was this one. I can't remember which one it was. It, it was one of these um when you download a logo try to get it with um it has a transparency you can kind of see there's like a checker block pattern behind this that means there is no um image it's just transparent uh if you can't find one that has a transparency that's okay um we can you can edit that out in gimp or photoshop whatever you want to use and then we need to find a um a background for the icon so um, in my instance I couldn't you know I couldn't really find one for Dino Crisis I had to just kind of um, find a texture of some kind so I just put um, uh, scratch metal uh, texture and it was and it was one of these so um, this is kind of where you have to get creative um, you have to find um, a background for your icon that when you put your um, logo on top of that, it's going to fit well with your game. It kind of fits the atmosphere. So I think I downloaded uh, this one right here. Um, you, can, you know, you can do anything you want again, but um, the I think the scratch metal, it kind of, it fits the atmosphere of, of Dino Crisis, which is, in my opinion, it's kind of, it's dirty, it's gritty, um, you know, it's there's dinosaurs or they're scratching the walls, you know, that kind of thing. So, again, just find a picture that you feel it kind of fits the atmosphere of the game and uh, you know, just download that and um, put that into your source files folder. So, um, again, um, you, you want to download a foreground object. So, you know, I've just downloaded um, a picture of Regina. Um, so, I would just put. Um, Dino Crisis, Regina, and you have uh, you know all kinds of pictures of Regina. So, you know for your particular game that you're making, um, just download um, or just save an image that you think will look good on the background, and you'll be good. So um, once you've got all that downloaded, you're done with your source files. Uh, so you you have a background uh, video. Uh, logo, uh, background uh, uh, image for your icon, a background image for your wallpaper, a uh, foreground character or object, and you have your game. So uh, we can go ahead and start um, editing our video. Okay, so um, I've gone ahead and edited down the uh, video that I downloaded down to about uh, 10 seconds. So you can see here it's uh, 9.64 seconds. Um, so I've just taken various... Um, action-oriented clips from the CGI cutscenes and just put them together. So um, I'm going to go ahead and save my movie here. Um, there's no really, there's not a real good pre default setting to save this as. 
So I'm gonna create my own, and I'll just call it Dino Crisis. Um, uh, we don't want to save it in such a high resolution because our original video is not um, a real high resolution. I think it's um, 640 by 480. So I'm just going to keep the original resolution here. I'll change these. And then um, bit rate, frame rate can say the same. Um, since the video I downloaded doesn't have any audio, I'm just going to select no audio here. And we're going to save this uh, setting as Dino Crisis. And we're going to go back up here and we're going to select uh, Dino Crisis as our, um, as our setting. And we're just going to save it to our desktop and we'll let it encode. And we don't want to play right now. So what we want to do now, um, since this our video is in a WMV format, we need to convert it to an AVI format. So we're going to open up our web browser and we're going to go to onlineconvert.com. Um, you can find over here on the side it says video converter, convert to AVI. This is also going to be uh, in the link in the description. So um, you know just click on that and it'll open it right up. Anyway, um, we want to upload our um, WMV video. So we'll click browse right there and we're going to find um, our movie we just made and we're going to open that. Um, here are some settings to kind of tweak the video settings a little bit but we don't need to do anything. We just need to click convert file. And it's going to upload our video file and it's going to, prov it's going to convert it and it's going to provide us with a download link where we can just download it directly. Uh, the cool thing about this site is it doesn't require you to use an email address. Um, so, you know, it's just, you know, hassle-free pretty much. So it's done, and it should present us with an option, and here it is. You see it says um, it's now an AVI file. So we're just going to save it to our desktop. And it's done. So here's our original, and then here's our new AVI file. So if I go ahead and uh, open up this video uh, file here, um, and I resize the, the window, I'm gonna show you. Um, you see that my video doesn't have any um, black borders in the video itself. You know, if I do this, it has blackboards because the video doesn't fit in the window, but uh, the video itself doesn't have black borders, so that's good. If your video does have black borders, um, go back to the text here, and in step three, you can see that um, I've written instructions on how to get rid of your black borders in uh, Virtual Dub Mod. So just follow step three; it's very easy to do. Um, anybody can do that. So there's instructions for that. But anyway, um, if you don't have uh, borders on your video, you know, it's less work for you, so we're good to go on that. Next, we need to open up um, our tool pack. And you need to go to uh, Icon MPS to PMF Converter. Open up VDM files. And you need to um, copy the, our AVI file that we just um, converted over to this folder here. And we need to rename it so that it says icon1. So we're gonna go rename, and we're just gonna call it icon1. You you have to rename it. If you don't rename it, um, your virtual dub will give you an error, so um, just rename it to icon1. Um, we're gonna go back to our tool pack, um, open up virtual dub mod, and then click uh, file, open video file, and we need to navigate to our tool pack, which is on our desktop, which is here, and we go icon MPS to PMF converter, VDM files, and then you need to select the icon1.avs. Do not select your, vi your video you just um, renamed 
don't select that. You need to select this script right here, the AVS file. So open that up. And what that script does, the AVS file, what it does is it basically just resizes our video down to a size that our PSP can use. So I think this is, if I remember correctly, this is like 140 by something or something, something like that. So uh, this is what our PSP can use. So um, open up uh, click streams, click stream list. Uh, if your video has audio in it, you'll see your audio stream right here. So you just click that and then there'll be a button over here that says disable. Um, my video file doesn't have any um, audio in it, so it's not showing up. But you don't need the audio in this tutorial. So you're just going to click disable audio if you have it. So then click OK. And then you click file, uh, save as. And then we're going to go back to our desktop. And we're going to save this as so something simple like icon icon one uh, VDM. That's just that's just something simple. So I'm gonna click save and it's going to convert. All right, now uh, go ahead and just close out of uh, Virtual Dub Mod. We don't need it anymore. Um, go back to your the root path of your uh, tool pack and. Um, if you're watching this YouTube video again and you've already done this once, uh, go to your uh, go to your documents, and if there is a um, a folder called um, UMD Stream Composer, just delete it. Uh, here I don't have one to delete, but if you see one that you've used previously, just delete the entire folder because you don't need it. Um, anyway, uh, go to your tool pack and open up UMD Stream Composer, and the program itself, the exe, open that up. Now we're going to go over here and click new. And um, we're just going to, for clip name, we'll just call it something simple. We're just going to call it PSP. And then for project name, we're just going to call it PSP. Comments, you don't need them. So just leave those blank. Click next. Um, video stream, leave it as one. Audio stream, since we don't have any audio uh, right now at this moment, we're just going to change this to a zero. Um, over here at max clip size, change this to one. And then right here, the, the box that says PSP movie format for game, tick that box. And click finish. And this is going to set up a project file for our um, our new video file. So now what we need to do, uh, we need to go up here to uh, video source and uh, we're going to click open here and we need to find the video file that we just converted um, with virtual dub mod. Um, so that's going to be on our desktop and it's going to be icon one VDM right here. Click open and then click OK. And then over here um, click video encoder setting um, and we're going to change the average bit rate to 200 and then we'll change the max bit rate to 400 and we're going to click OK. And then go up here to uh, run and then click encode plus multiplex. So that's going to uh, encode our video into a format that the PSP can understand. And then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, check the size on it. So it's done. Uh, you can close out a stream. Uh, close out a UMD stream composer. We don't need it. Uh, just you want to save it, just click no. And uh, minimize that. So uh, open up. Um, Open up your documents, and we're going to find the folder that says UMD Stream Composer. Open that up. Go to uh, Muxwork, PSP, uh, 00001, and uh, this file right here, this uh, 00001.mps, this is our um, new video file. It's just in a format that Windows doesn't understand. but um, 
click on that file and check the size right here. If it says, um, if it's if it's right around 250 kilobytes, uh, you're probably you're probably good. Uh, if it's way over 250 get 50 kilobytes, you're probably going to have to cut back some on the video. So that's why we left. Um, that's why you need to leave your um, your video project open or save your video project because if you do need to make changes, like if uh, if the size of your MPS file is too big, if it's way way over 250 kilobytes, you need to go back here and uh, make some changes, shorten it a little bit so that um, it, it comes close to 250 kilobytes. Um, but uh, mine is 248 kilobytes, so that's pretty close. So we're good on that. So basically right now we're done with the video portion of the file. Now we need to um, put our video portion on hold and we need to go ahead and work on the audio portion. So I'm gonna close out of that and I'm gonna close out of um, my uh, video editor because I don't need it anymore. My file is um, right around 250 kilobytes, so I'm good on that. Uh, next, we need to um, work on our audio. So we're going to open up Audacity. And we're going to go over here to uh, File, Import, Audio. And we need to go to our um, source files. So that's on our desktop and down across the source files and our background music. I'll open that up. So you want to uh, trim this audio down to about 30 seconds. That's when it's all said and done, that's gonna be pretty close to 250 kilobytes. Um, so 30 seconds is pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll continue. Okay, so I've uh, trimmed my audio down to about 28 seconds as you can see right here. Um, so before we finalize this, there's a couple things we need to do in order for it to sound to sound good but when it's played on the PSP. So um, first of all, um, you can see here that my audio doesn't have any uh, lead in. It doesn't have any silence. So we want to have like half a second of silence because um, when our audio plays, when it gets to the end and it loops on the PSP, it'll, it's, all, it's going to just instantly start playing this and it'll sound bad. So um, what we're going to do, we want to put our cursor all the way at the beginning here and we're going to generate um, and we're going to click silence. And uh, right here it's set to like 30 seconds of silence. So we want to change that. Uh, to make this a zero, you want to change this to um, a five. So that's um, 0.5 seconds of silence. And you can see here um, we have 0.5 seconds of silence. And the next thing we need to do, um, we need to um, apply some fade out to the end of our audio right here. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to apply about 1.5 seconds so this is 28 and a half seconds long so I'm going to go here to uh, 27 seconds and just drag the selection over and I'm going to go here here to effect and fade out and so that fades our audio out so that when it when the PSP starts playing our audio right here we'll have half a second of silence it'll play our audio file and then when it fades out it'll start over at the at the silence and it'll start playing again so so that this way our audio is not going to sound bad and unfinished um, when it's playing on our on our PSP so we're just going to go up here to file I'm going to go to export audio uh, and the uh, we're going to save it to the desktop and under uh, save as type we're going to click um, mp3 files right here and we're just going to save it as any name. It doesn't really matter. So it's called BGM. I just, I'm just going to save it uh, BGM edit. And we'll save it to the desktop. Uh, tags don't matter. So just click OK. And it's going to export our audio as an MP3. Now, the, 
with Audacity, in order to export as MP3, you have to install the lame MP3 encoder. So make sure you do that in order to export MP3s. So I'm just going to minimize this just in case I have to make changes. Next, we need to open up a uh, gold wave. I'm just going to let that load. So uh, this is um, this is the shareware version of Gold Wave. So we're limited to how many commands we can use uh, before the the program becomes disabled. So because this is trial software, um, we're limited to. Um, it, it says here in the documentation we're limited to 200 commands uh, every time we use Gold Wave, and 2,500 commands total. So. You know, that, that seems like a lot of, of commands, but it's actually not, especially when you start actually, you know, using a program and when you make mistakes, it um, the count racks up pretty fast. So um, the only thing we need Goldway for is to save our audio. We're not going to be doing anything with it. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to find our, um, our, edit, our music edited that we edited right here. And we're just going to open that up with Gold Wave. So if you click File Open, that counts as a command. So I just drag and drop it in. That does not count as a command. So here we have our audio edited um, opened up right here. So we're just going to go ahead and click uh, File, Save As. And then we want to save it to our desktop. And under file, uh, the, the save as type, we're going to select wave. And then right here, we're going to click this button that says set attributes. And this is where I ran into a problem with Windows 7. As you can see here, um, the ATRAC3 codec is not showing up uh, in, the at, in the set attributes window here. So um, what I had to do is I had to go uh, out to my workshop where I have an older Windows XP computer and I've just captured some screenshots here and you can see right here we set the file type to uh, wave and then in the uh, attributes uh, selection here you can see there are three options for A-Track 3. There's uh, 66 kilobits per second, 105 and 132 kilobits per second. So I did encounter this problem with Windows 7. Uh, I have used this successfully on Windows Vista and Windows XP, so um, I'm not sure if this is specifically related to my computer. Um, I know that some people have got it to work on Windows 7, so um, the uh, information earlier about um, installing the ATRAC3 codecs for Windows 7, it is still valid because it does work for some people. Uh, it did not work for my computer, so I had to use uh, this Windows XP machine to uh, finish this um, sound file up. So once you're done saving that file, you don't need GoWave anymore. Because uh, all we use GoWave for was to just save the file in, in a different format. So just go ahead and close out of GoldWave. And uh, you can save my new file here. Now again, I did not uh, edit this file with the GoldWave that's here on my Windows 7 laptop. Uh, I had to go use my Windows XP machine in uh, my workshop. So uh, yeah, that that's where this came from. But um, I got it. Uh, I was able to uh, get it um, edited correctly in Gold Wave. But anyway, I just renamed it um, Background Music uh, Edit Gold Wave, GW for Gold Wave. Just something simple. You can name it anything, it doesn't matter. So the next step is to uh, compare our audio and our video files, or the, that NPS file, and to see where we stand uh, in relation to the 500 kilobyte limit. So, um, here we have the uh, sound file we edited with uh, Gold Wave. So um, we're just going to click Properties. And we're, what we're looking for is the size. So you see that uh, the size here is 229 kilobytes. Okay, so uh, next we're going to open up Documents. And we're going to go to UMD Stream Composer, Muxwork, PSP, uh, 00001. And you see here we have our MPS file. Uh, so if I just click on it, you see that the size of that file is 248 kilobytes. 
So what we're going to do, we're just going to add uh, the size of this and the size of this together. So let's just open up a calculator here. And so we have 248 plus uh, 229, and that's 477. And uh, that's uh, that's uh, under the 500, 500 kilobyte limit, so that's good. Um, I will make a note that uh, we will be converting this file to a PMF. This MPS file will be converting that to a PMF so that it's going to work on our PSP. Uh, so when you convert this file to a PMF, um, it's going to add two kilobytes to the size. And so, you know, that doesn't sound like a lot, and it's not. But when you're trying to get as close to 500 kilobytes as possible, because you're trying to, you're trying to squeeze a lot of content into such a small um, size, uh, that two kilobytes can really make a difference. So uh, that's just a forewarning. If you're very close, when you, when you add these two files up, if you're very close to 500 kilobytes, uh, just keep that extra two kilobyte um, conversion in mind when we actually do that. But, um, you know, if we add an extra two, two kilobytes of this, you know, of course, we're good. So uh, we don't have anything to worry about. So uh, the next step, we're just going to um, open up our tool pack here. And we're going to go to the folder that says icon uh, MPS to PMF converter. We're going to open that and we're going to go to uh, MPS files. And we're going to copy this uh, 00001.mps file over to um, the MPS files folder. And then we, you see we have a batch file here that says iconconverter.bat. So we're just going to run that. And it's going to run a script. And we now have a new file called 00001.pmf. And notice the size right here. When I, as I hover over it, you notice the size says 250 kilobytes. So the conversion did add an extra two kilobytes. So uh, we're just going to right click on this and rename it. And we're just going to call this. Uh, in, all, in all capitals, icon one dot pmf, and then we can drag and drop this file into our Dino Crisis Final Files folder because we are done with the video. And then I just like to delete this because I don't need it right now. So that's done, and we don't need this. All right, next we can finish up our audio. So uh, if you right click on your Gold Wave uh, saved audio, click rename, and we're just going to rename the extension to .at3, and then select enter. Attention. And Windows is gonna say, uh, if you do this, it might break your file. Are you sure you wanna do it? Just click yes. And then uh, if, if you don't want your sound to loop when it plays on your PSP, um, you're you're done. Uh, you just go ahead and rename this um, uh, SND 0.at3 and you're done. Now I do want my sound to loop because I just think it uh, sounds better. So what we're going to do, we're going to open up the tool pack and we're going to select the uh, folder that says Gold Wave A Track 3 Looping Tool. Open that up and then uh, run the file that set or run the application that says uh, GWAT3. So we're going to run that. And then you're going to take your new AT3 file that you renamed, drag and drop it into the application, and click start. Attention. And what it did was it created a new file with the uh, uh, prefix that says looped. And what this program does is it, it forces the uh, your AT3 file to loop when it plays in your PSP. If you don't do this, the sound file will play one time and it will not play again until you basically scroll over that game and come back to it. So uh, if you scroll to the game uh, in your PSP and um, you just you know sit there, uh, this file will loop over and over, you know forever pretty much. And that's the way I want it. So uh, exit out of that program. We're done with this, and we're done with this. So uh, take your loot file and rename it, and we're going to call it capital SND 0.at3. And now our sound file is done. So drag and drop that into your final files folder. <laughs> 